Hey, what's up guys? JQ with Tech Creation. You guys asked for it, so without further ado, here's what's on my Galaxy S7 Edge. Now you might be asking, hey Jay, where are your apps? Well, I'm using the popular Nova launcher that replaces the cartoony stock TouchWiz skin, and I manipulated it so with a simple swipe up gesture, it jumps to page 3 where all my apps are, creating the illusion that they appeared out of nowhere. Nova Launcher continues to be my favorite launcher thanks to its Android feel with its fluidity and response time, and things like opening folders in the app drawer look pretty attractive. It offers an overwhelming amount of features like the ability to change the look of icons and folders, your home screen grid, assign gestures, toggle transparency elements, and best of all you can back up and import the layout and settings for your other devices. Now why do I have this set up like this? Well, first off, I love myself a clean home screen, and secondly, I decided to give Samsung's Edge panel a second chance. And with this layout, it forces me to take advantage of panels which has since then solidified my navigation and have been satisfied thus far. Now the apps I keep here are the ones that I need access to at any given moment, and the same goes for Tasks Edge. I also have the material design theme installed from Samsung's theme store, and it emulates stock Android pretty well in the notification shade and within the settings. And I think it's a great complement to Nova Launcher. Now for my wallpapers, I use Zedge. So Zedge has a huge library of some badass wallpapers with all sorts of categories from abstract and spiritual to anime and entertainment. I mean, you're bound to find something within the first 10 seconds of browsing, I promise. And in addition, they offer a large selection of ringtones, notification tones, and even icon packs, and it's certainly a must-have for anyone who's into personalization. For productivity, I use Google Drive and Dropbox for my cloud storage needs. For fast file transfers, I use Send Anywhere. Now this is a simplistic cross-platform file transfer app that uses a one-time secure six-digit pin that the recipient uses to receive files being transferred. And it's really just that simple, I mean, it just works. It's crazy convenient and best of all, you don't even need to create an account or anything. I really have a soft spot for this app. Another awesome app I use is ES File Explorer Pro. Now this is a robust file manager app that in addition to accessing local storage, you can connect cloud accounts like Dropbox or OneDrive, plug directly into your home network via LAN, or set up an FTP slash SFTP connection for when you're away from home. Ultimately, having all your files and servers coexisting within one app, giving you the ability to copy files between all platforms. Certainly worth checking out. I rely heavily on Google's products and one of them being Google Keep. I use this to write down ideas, script my videos, and create shot lists, and I also use Google Sheets to keep track of my YouTube expenses and such. FYI, Excel Sheets are pretty powerful. Now for my alarm clock, I use Timely. This is a beautifully designed app that's filled with vivid colors and subtle background animations, which of course you can customize to your liking. Adding and deleting alarms is very simple, also features a slick stopwatch and timer design, and best of all, all of your alarms sync through the cloud between all of your devices, allowing you to remotely enable or disable your alarms. So yeah, that's Timely. Now for my calendar, I use Today Calendar Pro. It's a simple one and it incorporates material design quite nicely. Information is easy to look at, navigation is fluid, and creating events is simple with instruction style voice input. Now you can also customize the primary and secondary colors to your liking, and overall I think it's an attractive looking calendar app that just gets the job done. Inside my photos folder sits the stock camera app, and I prefer using Google Photos as my gallery. I find it to be clean, easy to use, and I can browse my device folders if I like, and I like the convenience of having select photos routinely backed up to the cloud, making it easily accessible across all of my devices and the web. There's also basic photo editing built in, but my photo editing app of choice happens to be Pixlr. Now with Pixlr you can create collages, or you can get heavy and start cropping, blurring, sharpening, make adjustments and apply filters to your images, you can doodle, create text, or choose borders. I mean, you get the point. It's a pretty robust photo editing app that's become a necessary tool for me and one that I enjoy using recreationally. Now my keyboard of choice, of course, happens to be SwiftKey Beta. Now I know there's plenty of swiping keyboards out there, but I find SwiftKey's accuracy to be unmatched. Beyond that, you can select a wide variety of themes to match your style, and they're constantly adding new ones, so I always like to switch it up from time to time. And what I love most is emoji predictions. When you're typing a word, SwiftKey suggests an emoji equivalent if available, which makes expressing yourself a lot more efficient, and it certainly beats cycling through a ton of emojis any day. Moving right along, in my financial folder, I have PayPal, some banking apps, and of course, Samsung Pay. 
Now you guys know how much I enjoy using Samsung Pay and if you own a Galaxy S7, you owe it to yourself to experiment with this breakthrough mobile payment solution. They've added a ton of support for banks. It's pretty dope and I still get the wow factor when I'm using it in public and I encourage you guys to try it out for yourselves. Now on the social side of things, I have Hangouts to talk to my YouTube peers, Instagram, YouTube, and I've settled for the stock Twitter app. I just find that it does simple things a lot better than alternative apps like mentioning and retweets. Now for music, I use Google Play Music. It's included with my YouTube Red subscription, so it only makes sense. It works great for me. I find it does a great job with aggregating the right playlists for any time or mood of the day, which makes me happy. Now we also have Creator Studio, which is a must for every YouTuber to have. It's the central hub for statistics, it helps keep track of video analytics, easily view and reply to comments, check your earnings, etc. And I really can't see myself not using this app. Next up, I have my shopping folder, very simple, Amazon and eBay. The two places I get most of my online shopping done, especially Amazon. Next is my eating slash outing folder where you'll find Grubhub and Seamless because let's face it, I tend to order in a lot. I just love food and these two apps make it convenient for me to enjoy delivery 24 hours a day. I then have Groupon in case I want to plan a night out. I mean, I've been able to catch some pretty slick deals on here in the past for events and weekend getaways, so that's the reason why I keep it around. In my utilities folder, I have apps that I use on a regular basis, the ever so useful Philips Hue app to control my light bulbs for my setup. I also have local cast that allows me to cast media locally stored on my phone from a network attached storage or from a cloud account straight to a Chromecast, a Roku, an Apple TV, or even an Amazon Fire TV. It's a pretty powerful app and I definitely recommend it if you have lots of media and streaming devices in your home. I also have the native Chromecast app in case I want to do any screen sharing. Now on the top right, you'll find the Harmony app to control my Harmony Elite remote. And if you don't know what that is, definitely go check out my review of it. So I have Shazam to tag music that's playing nearby when I'm out and about. I also have MX Media Player that supports virtually every video format known to man. So I use this for watching movies offline. I then have URL shortener, which is perfect for anyone who shares a lot of links. I use this to share links across social media and to my friends and family. And what's great is you can track the analytics to see how many times your links have actually been clicked. Now last but not least is my traveling folder. So living in New York City or any city for that matter, these apps are almost mandatory. I use City Mapper that shows me nearby transit routes as well as real time ETA, which is a major convenience when I'm on foot. You can see your railroads, subway or the ferry. You can also set your home or work address for easy one tap directions. And it even has Uber integration. Now speaking of Uber, this is another app that I frequent when I need to get somewhere quick and Uber's pricings are comparable to city taxis, sometimes better, and the service and reliability far exceeds it. And finally, I use Google Maps for my GPS companion when I'm actually driving. Now I love the idea of free turn-by-turn -turn navigation on a smartphone, and Google Maps has improved so much over the years with their acquisition of Waze, with their real-time traffic being on point, and with the ability to download areas of the map for offline navigation, that really just puts the icing on the cake for me. Alright guys, that just about wraps it up. My setup isn't too crazy. I prefer simplistic functionality over anything. But I'd love to know what you guys are using on your smartphones these days, so go ahead and drop a comment letting me know. As always, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and show some love to that like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for some awesome tech videos every week. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.